Hello, I'm Hai Bin Lu, and uh, welcome to the second half of the machine learning module. We will study logistic regression, neural networks, and unsupervised learning, deep generative models, and machine learning in medical imaging applications. In the labs, we will make more use of the PyTorch library. Let's start. So this week, we will talk about logistic regression and also introduce PyTorch for deep learning. I will create a playlist in YouTube so that you can read the, uh, you can view the same week's lecture in sequence. So in this week, I will first talk about some important issues in machine learning. And then we will talk about the motivations for logistic regression. And then we introduce logistic regression and then gave more coverage of the computational graph in PyTorch. And then finally, introduce PyTorch, which is a deep learning library. Firstly, some important issues about machine learning. There are many analogies for machine learning, but I like this one uh, the most, which is in the book, The Master Al Algorithm by Pedro Domingos. He said, learning algorithms are the seeds, data is the soil, and the learned programs are the grown plants. The machine learning expert is like a farmer sowing the seeds, irrigating and fertilizing the soil and keeping an eye on the health of the crop, but otherwise staying out of the way. So I view machine learning as a standard pipeline. We start with data and typically we need to load the data from some external source and then pre-process the data to a standard uh, representation. And then we do a kind of embedding to learn a more compact representation and then pass to a predictor so that we can predict some output from the input representation. And then after we do the presentation, we need to evaluate the prediction outcome. And then finally, we need to interpret our prediction outcome or the decision process. So based on this pipeline, I have built a library uh, defined in this pipeline called PyQ over the summer. And in this PyQ library, I defined the modules in the core API in the sequence of this pipeline. And if you are interested, you can browse through some of the examples to see how this can be constructed. And uh, there are several key ingredients in machine learning. The first one is data. And we often need to do pre-processing to change the, to transform the data into a standardized representation. And it's often useful to, for, to visualize your data, to uh, know about it before you actually do the processing. And a common pre-processing is to standardize the data to zero mean and a standard deviation of one. And uh, the second key ingredient of machine learning is the model, the machine learning model. In terms of machine learning model, firstly, we need to have a structure or sometimes it called architecture. And this often you need expert knowledge. And it must, we must be specify the structure or the architecture before we do any learning. 
And uh, if we have multiple options for structures, and then we can optimize the structures through cross-validation. And in machine learning model, another very important terminology and concept is hyperparameter. So this is a parameter that we must specify as design choices, and we can also optimize them through cross-validation. And this is sometimes called tuning. And uh, for example, some prior knowledge has the number of degrees in polynomial basis and the number of layers in neural networks. And you need some knowledge to specify the range of hyperparameters. And, this, and, and lastly, in machine learning, what we are learning are the model parameters, and that's commonly represented, represented using theta. And we need to build a model to compute or to learn the parameters, such as weights and bias in regression. And to do this, we need optimization, and uh, usually we need optimization al algorithms. And uh, in terms of evaluation metric, this determines what is the best. What is the best in terms of the loss, a, a particular loss or particular error function? This will determine what parameters to learn and what hyperparameters to choose and also what structure or architecture to use. And finally, optimization is often needed to find the best learnable parameters. Another very important issue in machine learning is reproducibility. And this is very important to build trustworthy systems. And in, in science, in scientific research, reproducibility is a crisis. And uh, it's very important to be able to reproduce a research outcome. And uh, it's very important for product to produce consistent output. And in terms of machine learning, to be reproducible, there are three key considerations. Firstly, is to make it modular. This can help understanding and the tracing of the machine learning algorithms. That's why we prefer a pipeline-based API and uh, in the development of machine learning algorithms. Second, it's important to keep a record of all the assumptions that you have made and the settings in designing your programs. And lastly, when there's randomness in your algorithms, you need to it's often useful to set a seat in the development so that you can monitor your perform the performance of your algorithm consistently. And we will study this in the lab. Therefore, in, in developing machine learning applications or algorithms is often useful to start simple and small. And the simplest prediction task is a binary classification task, where the input is some kind of features or feature vectors, and the output is simply a binary value that is either zero or one. And how difficult this prediction task is, is determined 
by the distribution of the input data. For example, the left panel is much easier to classify than the data in the right panel. So in the next section, we will take a look at logistic regression. One of the most popular and important classification algorithms for binary classification and also multi-class classification. 